Hi, I'm Gohar Vardanyan and I'm back with another etude for the Guitar Etude series. Today I have the second etude from Estudio Sencillos by Leo Brower. So this is probably the shortest etude I have uh, recorded thus far. Uh, it's only three lines and we just have a handful of chords, but it can be deceivingly difficult. The reason I chose this etude, um, even though it was so short, is because of the, the chords and how balanced they need to be. So depending on the edition that you have, most likely you will have um, lento written at the top for the, for the tempo which is pretty slow, and then a chorale right on top of that. So the chorale tells you that this is this is a chorale, so you have to think of it more um, not in blocked chords, but in a chorus singing each line. So you'll have your alto, um, tenor alto and the soprano in the chords together, and then the bass when it comes in occasionally. So the tricky part really is when you play each one of these chords is to make sure that it's completely balanced. So as I play this, I am listening to be able to hear individual notes in it. So the B, the A in the alto voice, and the D in the tenor voice. And this depends, I mean, depending on the instrument that you have, you'll have to balance the chord accordingly. On some guitars, depending on how fresh your strings are, um, how your instrument works, your D string might be very loud. So you'll have to balance it your thumb um, to not play so loud, so your D string doesn't overpower the rest of the chord. On a lot of guitars, the third string sounds a little bit tubby, and sometimes it gets lost in the chord, so you have to make sure that the A is heard. Uh, and the top voice, usually the top voice is not really an issue. If, you, if you're listening to it, it'll come out, uh, because the melody is usually there, and we are so trained to always listen for the melody, but the middle voices can easily get lost. So each chord that I would play, I would listen and see if I can pick out every single note that I'm playing and balance accordingly um, in the right hand. In my case, I prefer to do these chords P-M-A uh, instead of P-I-M. The music says P-I-M, but I feel like P-M-A allows me to balance them a little bit better, M-A together they're sort of more equal length um, and when I play these two together they sound more uniform than if I play I am together. I can make them sound uniform but it's almost like I have to make an effort um, to make sure that my M finger isn't louder since it's the longer finger. Um, so I put M and A together to make sure without any effort it's already more balanced. And, and then it also gives more space for the thumb so if I'm playing PIMA my index finger is more, more or less in the way. With the M, I have more space for my thumb to really work easily and um, I can choose the dynamic that I'm playing. So when I played it, I basically played PMA for all of these chords. So I would go through the entire piece. What also helps is to play individual voices. So you have your tenor voice here, and then you have your alto voice soprano voice and then when you 
put them together, you should be able to pick out um, the, those voices individually. And of course, you can listen to them all at the same time, but try to pick one and follow it and see if you can pick it out as you're playing the chords. Um, then you have kind of the same thing. Then you have the next chord again, and I would listen to it. It helps to play them individually, like this, so you really listen to all the notes, and then you play them together and see if you get the same uh, sound. And again, playing all the notes uh, separately, so you have the tenor, and then you have the alto staying the same, and you have the soprano going D, C, D. So. Whenever you have um, dissonances, those are, in, at least in this case, that's what makes that chord so colorful and so beautiful. So for example, later on in a piece when I have to play, so here, this, uh, the second here, between the F sharp and the G. So that really means that you have to play um, the F and then the F sharp and the G almost at this, but really the exact same volume so that you can hear the, the dissonance between them, the fight that they have. If my third string wasn't loud enough, then it would be Um, and colorful, really distant sound. So that's for individual chords and also listening more for the, the chorale, the, the lines for individual voices. The, the next difficult thing is to actually physically make sure that you are not uh, playing blocked chords. So what I mean is so it doesn't sound like... You have to really play it super legato and even though the chords are not very difficult you have to learn to synchronize the two hands so when you're playing one chord and you want to go to the next one you have to make sure that the timing of your left hand putting the fingers down and the right hand plucking them is exactly at the same time so 100% synchronized and there is no hesitation or there is no like contact with the string. So if I do this and I, I put my right hand down to feel the strings before I actually lock, that's going to create an interruption in sound. So really I have to make sure that my right hand is only plugging the strings, only touching the strings when it's ready to go right through it. So eliminating any, um, any cutting. And then the same thing, then timing it when it happens with the, right, with the left hand. that's easier to do when you are playing faster um, because there's some momentum going things move quicker less things are noticeable when it's faster when it's really really slow and you are sitting on this chord and you're listening to its beauty any any noise or any sound that you make is going to be amplified because it's uh, slow um, and that noise takes a lot of time and it interrupts the sound and your silence ends up being longer so slower Sometimes it's more difficult, even though you have more time to prepare the fingers and to, to hold them over the strings. So I would encourage you to, to learn the etude. It's not very difficult. Just, to, just so you can play around with the balance of the chord, um, the, the, the chorale-like nature, because we do end up having to play this kind of things, these kind of things in, in our repertoire a lot. Um, a lot of times when you have a succession of blocked chords, it's not really about the blocked chords, it's about the, the melodic line that they create. Um, it's just that when, when we're playing them, we're so concerned about shifting the chords that it can sound like blocked chords. But in reality, you have to think more linearly and try to make a line out of them just as a, as a chorale or as a chorus or um, like two singers, three singers, depending on the voice. So I hope this is helpful and I will see you soon. 
with another etude. So thank you so much for watching.